Hey everyone, so in this video, we're going to take a quick look at Text Mesh Pro. It's free, it's easy to use, it's built into Unity. Although the first time that you try to use it, you will get a prompt to import a couple more files. So you just go ahead and import those files and then you'll be able to continue. So the first part of this video, we're gonna look at the actual component. So when you create a Text Mesh Pro object, there's a component and that there are various settings. We're gonna look at some of those settings. And then at the end of the video, we'll look at some of the demos that the Text Mesh Pro Park package has included. So if you go up to game object UI, so it's a UI object and you click on text mesh pro and going forward, I'm just going to say text. So if you've never used a UI object, this might be a little bit off putting. So this is your camera way down here. And yet this is your camera zoomed out. Excuse me. This is your canvas zoomed out here. That's okay. That's just the way Unity presents the UI. So this border is indeed the camera border. So like if I take this object that we just created and put in the upper right corner and I run it, it is indeed in the upper right corner. So it's a little bit off putting the first time you see the UI like this. It's just the way Unity handles it. So let's look at some of the settings. So here is the text component. You can do RTL, which is right to left editing. So that's right there. So for the text input, we are just going to type game title. Now text style basically presets. So you can do things like if you click on this, you can do H1, quote, link. And just so you know, this doesn't actually turn it into an actual link this just formats it as if it's a link in other words it makes it blue gives it an underline it doesn't actually create a hypertext and there's a few other examples here now i'm not 100 percent certain but i believe the reason why they use the h1 and c or h123 the h and c naming is i believe that comes from like html and css cascading style sheet i'm not 100 percent sure because i took those classes over a decade ago but i seem to remember that those that was the kind of naming that html and css used to indicate like headline one headline two and there would be various presets associated with it if someone knows for certain feel free to put it into the comments but i believe that's what the naming is re is referencing but the big takeaway is it just gives you some presets as far as size and color and that kind of thing so what's going to happen is as we go through this tutorial you're going to see some of these things repeat that's because these are just presets okay so it's going to seem redundant. This is if you see something that you like, you can just use that and call it a day rather than continuing. So we'll leave it at normal. So main settings, font assets. So you can choose different fonts. Like you can choose like Anton and Bangers and electronic highways like made of all dots. Let's tick, stick with Anton because there's some interesting things we can do there. Now, once again, you're going to have some presets, so it's going to seem redundant with what you're going to do in a few minutes. It's again, if you like that these presets, you can just use these rather than doing it manually. So like this drop shadow. Hard to see on the gray background, but there's indeed a shadow. There's an outline. Sunny days, that's kind of nice. It adds a texture and makes it look like it's indented, not indented. It makes it look like the edges are raised and there's even some lighting around the edge. So that's a very nice effect. But we're just going to stick with the basics so we can do this manually. Okay, so styles you can do bold, italic, underline, strike through, although I think the strike through is kind of low, but I don't know of any way to change that setting. All lowercase, all uppercase. You can do um, all uppercase, but they make that the uh, the non-first letter smaller. So it's all uppercase in style, but smaller. As you can see, with the exception of the last three, these are not mutually exclusive. So you can do any combination that you want. Again, except for these three, because these all format uh, uppercase and lowercase. Font size, whatever size you want. You can do auto size, so the more you type, the smaller it gets, I'm uncertain why you'd want to do that because typically you want to present tech, uh, uh, font size consistently, but just so you know, it's there. And then of course, there were some other settings that you can manually do as far as the sizing. 
vertex color, color gradient. So if you choose color gradient, again, you can choose presets or you can do it manually by clicking on the colors. But if you choose the preset, you can see there's like blue to purple. That one I think is actually really nice. Dark to light green, light to dark green. So that reverses it, yellow to orange. So you've got some presets there, we'll do none. So again, you can either choose a preset or you can do this manually. Alignment as far as like horizontal, vertical, wrapping, do you want it to be enabled or disabled? You really can't tell here because the size of this does not extend beyond uh, the size of the box. So that's if the uh, if it can't fit on one line or fit within the box, what happens? Overflow, horizontal, vertical mapping, we'll skip those for now. Okay, so the extra settings. So you have margins within the box. And again, I keep saying box, it's referring to this here, the width and the height, which is width, of course, and height. Rich text. Yeah, we're going to skip these for now. Those are really more for a more advanced tutorial. Like I said, this is just more for awareness so you know that this is out there. Going forward, I'll be using this in uh, my tutorials and my games. Up to this point, I've been still using the 3D text if I don't feel like using a UI level or a layer or it, I use regular text for UI. So I'll be moving to Text Mesh Pro after this. Okay, so again, we can now manually do some of those presets that we looked at, like color. You can change the color. Uh, softness. So maybe uh, I can think of some very specific. Someone's taking an eye test, and you want to make the text blurry as if you know they're they're not wearing glasses, or maybe someone has just woken up. You could do things like that. You can make it blurry. Dilate. You could actually use this to make the text almost completely disappear. A few dots show up there, but you could use this to dissolve text. Outline, we reviewed this before, so this is what I was talking about, about how you could do things using a preset or you can do it manually. So there's the outline. What color do you want the outline to be? So you can make the outline a different color. So very versatile. Thickness of the outline. Underlay, we're looking at a preset for this. So as you can see, it creates this like shadow. And there's a few things you can do with this. So you can do normal, you can do in air. Not sure what that does. I will have to get back to you guys. I was not able to find that. But you can change the color. Again, make it like a purple. It doesn't really show up great on the gray background. You can do the offset. So X and Y. So uh, X is horizontally, Y is vertical. So you can move where that offset is. So if I move this, you can see it moved negative, it moved to the left. Same thing for Y, it's negative one, so it's down. If you do this, it's pointed up. And again, since it's an underlay, it's not gonna move a whole lot. And you also have dilate and softness. So right now it's set to a very soft, actually let's move that back there. You can see it has kind of this soft, fuzzy look to it. You can make that much harsher if you want, something in between. Uh, and then dilate again. Same kind of effect, you can make it like dissolve. Okay, so that's it for the basic settings. I skipped over a lot of them, but I did hit the major ones that you would use. A lot of the other ones you might actually change in runtime using a C Sharp script, but that will be a later tutorial. I'm just gonna show you a few examples now that come with Text Mesh Pro, and then uh, you can actually use that for training purposes as well. So let's just go to, so I went to the Text Mesh Pro folder, and then examples. And then scenes, I'm gonna get a warning message because I did not save this scene. But what this does is this gives you some examples. 
So like for instance with this one, this is really more of an instruction than as opposed to an actual uh, scene, but they, they, they for e ease of use, they put it into a scene. So bold, you would surround the text with that. So if you go again to TextMesh Pro, and remember how we had the text input, see how they didn't just type, they actually put these tags in here. And again, this is very HTML and CSS how they surrounded, like they said, like here is U for underline, and then you'll see a corresponding slash U, which means that everything from here to there between those tags will be underlined other than, of course, the other coding. So like basic style tags is underlined. Sure enough, basic style tags is underlined. Available in text mesh, also underlined. So you could just look at this to see how it works. So B slash B. So again, I think that naming convention is becoming pretty clear that you have brackets with the um, tag and then you end the affected area by having brackets slash that tag. So I slash I. And so italics will be in italics. And sure enough, there it is. So I'm not going to go through all these. So hopefully that is clear what's going on, that you're using these tags to surround, to kind of bookend what you're trying to do. And there's a few others here that, that were not in the, um, the inspector. So superscript. So if you want something in the upper right corner there, subscript, something in the lower right corner there. You can do highlighting. So in that case, you do mark the color, and then again, slash mark to end the area that's highlighted. There's a few other interesting ones. This one will probably require a tutorial, but what they did here is they used images to represent bullets. So let's actually run this one because to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on. So normally you have bulleted with bullets like this. Here they actually used an image instead of a bullet. So one, two, three. Okay. And there's a couple other inline graphics. So you can see that they actually have emojis right in. And in fact, I believe this one animate, he winks when uh, you run this. Also, it's animated as far as it types it out for you. Yeah, he winks. I don't think the other guys do. I think he's the only one that animates. And drop down box. So again, even as it says options and things like that, this is a good example for that. So you click on it, you have various options. Make a selection, and then you have a done button. So, like I said, these are all available to you. Just uh, it's already downloaded. You just have to do the import, and then you should be all set. So, if you have any questions, let me know. So, if there's certain features you want to see me do a, t a tutorial on, please leave a comment. And say, can you um, can you demonstrate drop down boxes? Can you demonstrate the emojis? That way I know what you guys want to see. So I think that's about it. So I think that this covers uh, at least the basics of TextMesh Pro. And I hope that you found this useful. And please enjoy the rest of your day.